my name is Andrew. If you don't know me, you should subscribe because like, why not? You should also hit the notification bell down below to be notified every time I upload a new video. But anyway, today I'm going to be filming my expectations and theories on Shadow and Bone, the TV show that is coming to Netflix on April 23rd. I, like many and all of us, am very excited to see the show. I have been waiting on it for so long now. It feels like forever. It honestly felt like it was never going to come out and we were never going to get content. And now over the past like few weeks, like the last week basically, we have been like bombarded with so much content, so many interviews, so many great things from the cast, so many little sneak peeks and teasers and everything. And it's just, it's just been a great time. It's been so fun to be living in the moment whenever we are about to get the show. So I'm really excited and I do have some theories. I do have some expectations. First, I'm going to talk about some shadow and bone theories I have for the show. Then I will go into my crow babies theories, what I'm going to be um, what I think is going to happen with the Six of Crows characters, and then I have a blended kind of thing for my expectations and basically my hopes and what I expect and what I want from the show. So let's just get started. First off for Shadow and Bone, I will say that I was never the biggest fan of Shadow and Bone. I always did prefer Six of Crows over Shadow and Bone. I've only read Shadow and Bone the whole series once and now I did read Six of Crows like four times so there's a bit of a difference for me and one thing, one major thing that I have a theory on is that I think Shadow and Bone, the overall premise, the plot, the characters, I think that they will be better suited for the screen. I think that the show will allow us more of a broader view of the whole world um, and so I think that the show is actually going to make Shadow and Bone better. I think it's going to make me like them better. I think it's going to make me particularly like Mal better. Um, I, as a lot of people, I'm not the biggest fan of Mal. I literally definitely was an anti-Mal person. I think that Mal from the books and the way that we get him from Alina's point of view does affect how we see Mal and so I think getting to see him on his own in the show is going to definitely make him a lot more likable. I also think that the side characters which to me felt very minor in the books I think that seeing them in the show once again will give them their own arcs and their own like space and time for us to really connect with them or at least me personally I didn't connect with any of the side characters. I honestly could not tell you who Jenya was. I couldn't tell the difference between Toya and Tamar. Like I didn't know. I had no idea who they were and so I'm hoping that the show is going to give me more and I think that it will. I think that Alina um, who's being played by the wonderful Jessie Mae Lee is going to be like 10 times better than book Alina. Um, I personally did not connect with Alina in the books like at all. Um, she was not one of my favorite YA protagonists. I didn't find her special at all. And so them choosing Jessie Mae Lee to be Alina was just a brilliant choice, I think. And in the show, I just, I think she's going to be so special. I think she's going to make Alina into this really brilliant character that I'm going to root for. I I think I'm going to stand finally. It's going to be great to finally stand Alina. And I feel like I'm just going on this journey brand new because I don't remember a lot from Shadow and Bone. I know the basic plot. I know that she's a sun summoner. I know the Darkling wants her because that is a unique power that does not come often in like centuries. And she's very important to the world of Grisha and just all the Grisha and the war and Ravka and everything. So I think that Jessie Mae Lee is going to bring something great to Alina. Along with that, I think that the Darkling is going to have a lot more layers than he did in the book, or we're just going to get to see them brought out more. Pretty much like Alina being played by such a great actor like Jessie Mae Lee. Same thing goes with the Darkling being played by Ben Barnes. Ben has talked about it. He has said in interviews, he has said himself on his Instagram that he wants to bring a different side to the Darkling. He wants to explore all aspects of this character and really humanize him and everything. And I think that might make the Darkling softer. Like, I don't know. I could be wrong. Watch me be incredibly wrong and he's still terrible, which I'm sure he will be. He's our villain. He needs to be. But I think Ben is just going to bring something really different to his character and give him those layers and give him more of a softer Darkling. I mean, come on, they're not even calling him the Darkling. They're calling him General Kirigan. You're telling me I'm supposed to be scared of General Kirigan? Who? No, ma'am. I'm not going to be scared of that. If his name was a Darkling, then I would be like, that's weird. The fact that he's bold enough to go by the Darkling, 
that's weird so I'm scared but he's not he's general Kierkegaard so he's a little bit soft <laughs> A theory that I have is that Mal will mingle with the Six of Crows characters. I think that at some point he will meet up with Jesper and Inej and Kaz. Um, I think that people have been connecting. Like the, the Shadow and Bones fans are crazy. Like, they're literally detectives, literally figured out to the characters, um, the actors for the characters before they were even released, before it was announced. They're just detectives. And so they've been piecing together different things from the trailers, from the interviews, from all the different countries' interviews that we get to see just everywhere, all the leaks. Um, and piecing together like, okay, this person's wearing this, Mal is wearing this, he looks like he's in the background of this picture. All that stuff so based on this general knowledge that i have found going down the rabbit hole on book twitter um specifically shadow and bone stan twitter i think that mal is somehow going to be mixed in with the crows um i think they're going to meet and i'll get a little bit more into that as i go into this next category if you want to call it that um but yeah i'm going to move on to six of crows now that's pretty much all i have for shadow and bone i don't got a lot i think it's going to just be overall better i think it's going to actually make me interested and that's the biggest, best theory I have, that it's going to be good. I don't know. That Shadow and Bone is just going to be well fitted for the screen and just like actually um, be able to see the plot better. And I'll be able to more understand the fold. And like when I saw the fold in the trailer, I was like, ah, that's what the fold is. Oh, that's a Volcra. So I think it's just, it's brilliant to be on screen. I think the show will end up being a lot better for Shadow and Bone. Moving on to Six of Crows theories. Now, um, getting into my crow babies is going to be a bit of an unraveling. I am hesitant. I am scared. I will touch on this more in my expectations and more of my personal thoughts. But in general, here's some theories I have for Six of Crows. I have a bit more specific theories, um, mostly because, again, I do favor Six of Crows. So I've been definitely analyzing and piecing things together on my own for that. But first off, I think that we will see Nina and Matthias and the shipwreck scene from the book. Assuming that you've read the books, then you will know that the Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom books both have flashbacks for the characters. And that's kind of how Lee builds their arc. That's kind of how she um, shows us why they are the way that they are. And um, so we do get those backstories in the books. So I think that there's a lot to go off as this is supposed to be a prequel to Six of Crows. Now I have heard that Kaz, Inej, and Jesper in particular are not, it's not going to be their flashbacks. It's not going to be just their backstories. It's going to be a prequel for them. However, I think with Nina and Matthias, we are totally just getting their flashbacks. Um, it looks like we're seeing the shipwreck scene. So whenever Nina is captured and Matthias is one of the Fjordans to capture her when, or one of the Drew school, um, I think that we are going to see that shipwreck scene literally from the book. Um, I also think we're going to hear some of the verbatim quotes, which I am so excited about because I recently just reread Six of Crows. That scene is great um, whenever they are shipwrecked and then they have to kind of survive together and journey and try to stay alive together and rely on each other even though they have this hate in their hearts for each other and for each other's kind. So I think that's going to be beautiful and especially if they do keep in those quotes it's going to be phenomenal. I can't wait. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Inej in the menagerie. I think that we will get that backstory um when Kaz gets Inej out of the menagerie and tells her that he has gotten her Haskell to buy her indenture she can now leave the menagerie work and actually be able to pay off her indenture one day whereas if she stayed with Tanta Helene she would never be free ever and so I think we're gonna see that whole scene and if we do it's gonna be crazy and I'm gonna cry. Theory number 1000 I will be crying the entire show it's not a secret it's not even a theory it's just a fact at this point but I do hope that we get to see that I would love to see it honestly we've got to see some people's reviews who have got to see the show already and I've seen a couple that are alluding to the fact that we will get that um could be wrong but I wouldn't be surprised if we do get to see that another theory that I have and a couple other people have based off of what we have seen from reviewers is that Jesper and him being bi and his sexual orientation and his relationships will be dived into more in the show, which is a bit odd and I can't really speak on it if I haven't seen the show. So I'm trying not to make 
judgments prior to seeing the show but as we did get the rating and I believe that it had some like sexual content rating then I think that Jesper is gonna have a sex scene which I'm not opposed to it's just different and it's hard to be a book stand and watch a show or a movie adaptation it's so hard because these are characters that you you feel like you know so well you feel like they're in your heart you know them they're yours and then for somebody else to kind of come take them and mold them a little bit different in how they see them and make them do what they want to do it's gonna be hard to see for me but i i if it's done well then I won't be mad at it and I trust them I trust the producers I trust the showrunner I trust the lead that if she likes it I trust the actors I trust everyone on the shadow and bone team so I think it'll be okay I'll, I think everything will be okay but yeah I think that Jesper is gonna get a sex scene um I know he hasn't met Wyland yet but uh Jesper mm -mm, I'm not I'm not gonna stand whoever it is because I Where's Wyland Van Sunshine now? That's oh, that's my question. Um, but no, yeah, that's a huge change. That'll be a huge change. Uh, we never, we never saw Jesper like that. So Jesper getting a sex scene. You heard it here first. Actually, I heard it from Twitter first. So I'm just relaying the message to you guys. Be prepared. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> I literally had no words right there. Okay. Uh, my final shadow and bone theory is that I don't think we're gonna see Kaz's backstory. I don't think we're gonna see his original trauma point, like where his trauma comes from. I don't think we're gonna see little Kaz or little Jordy in the river um, at the barge. I, I don't think we're gonna get all that. I'm pretty sure that it's because they wanna leave room, they want us to have another season and be able to really dive in to the book plot to Six of Crows and finally get to see their story actually pick up and go off of that. So I'm not mad about that. It does seem like some reviewers have alluded to the fact that we don't get to see too much of Cass's backstory and it's a lot um it's a lot more vague. It's there but it's vague and like of course we know but as a watcher who's never read the books you probably won't be able to tell or pick up on his touch aversion um like the gloves and you might just think it's weird but i don't think that we will actually get to see kaz's trauma so i lied i have one more like final six of crows theory um but that one is that i think that the crows we know that they are sent on a mission on a job to get alina for that random guy in the trailer who's like bring me alina starkov for one million kruga and i'm like First of all, I thought it was called Kruge. Kaz would not go to the ice court for anything less than 30 million Kruger. You think he's gonna go for 1 million to find Alina, to find a whole person? Like, it's the same, it's the same thing. But anyway, I, I don't know. We'll see how that's gonna go. I, I don't actually really know the logistics of it. I'm so confused a bit. But I do think that the crows are gonna fail at finding Alina. I don't think that they're actually gonna get her because how would there be a season two? What is Elena gonna do with the crows? Like, and how, why would the crows actually find her and give her to them? I don't, maybe they will because you know, maybe they don't care, I don't know. This is making me stressed out. I have like multiple theories going in my head. It's like that meme of that guy with the board of like all the different connections. Yeah, that's me right now. Um, but like I said earlier, I do think that Mal will connect with the Six of Crows characters. So maybe the crows will help Mal find Elena and then they will just like, give her to Mal and them can just go off. Is that a theory? Is that a good theory? Does anybody else have that theory? Somebody else out there probably has something way better, but I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I've got. Now I can move into my expectations and my own personal hopes and dreams for Shadow and Bone. Number one, Kaz and Inej's trauma. I need it to be handled properly. I expect it to be handled properly. I will not take anything less. No, I will not. I just feel like we're going to see more of Inej's backstory, especially with the menagerie being explored. And I just really hope that it's done well. I don't want to see Kaz and Inej in a very lovey-dovey relationship. I don't want to see them touching. I don't want to see them spilling their guts and spilling out their love for each other because that's not, that's not Kaz and Inej. So I hope that their trauma is just handled well. Um, if we're not going to see Kaz's, you know, backstory and the origins of his trauma, then I just hope that Inej is handled well and all the characters around her um, respect it. And then I hope that the 
directors and showrunners and producers have handled it well and with respect. Inej being a child who was taken, captured, and sold into a pleasure house at the age of what, 15, 14? That is something that needs to be handled respectfully and it's an important topic. It's something that can be explored on screen and really set up a background for Inej and everything that she's gone through and struggled with and come out on top of and just become stronger because of what she's endured and the fact that she has endured. So I hope that we do see that. I don't want their trauma to be erased. I don't want it to be minimized. I want it to be there and evident and I want it to be handled well. I expect and really do think that the effects and the soundtrack and the music and the actors will be incredible. I, I really do think that the whole cast and the whole team is just so good and I think they have done an incredible job. I think they have really pulled off like a masterpiece so I'm going into this ex fully expecting to love it and to think and to be blown away so I, I just really think that it's going to be amazing. I hope that the reach of this show is like the other big Netflix movies and stuff and like Bridgerton and it becomes a phenomenon and everybody's talking about it and you're not even a book fan, you're not even on Stan Twitter but you've heard of Shadow and Bone. Like I hope that all the in real life people in my life, everybody that just knows nothing about all of this, all the fandoms and whatnot, I hope they all hear about it. I hope that the show is just loud and great and beautiful and everyone loves it. I expect to hear no mourners, no funerals at least once an episode. Probably more than once an episode. I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but I expect to hear it many, many times. And I will be replaying it over and over again. And I expect to hear it from every single one of the crows. I want to hear it from Kaz. I want to hear it from Inej. And I want to hear it from Jesper and any of the other drugs that may be um, made it into the show. Also, I don't think that Nina and Matthias are going to be crows yet, so they have some leeway. I don't expect it from them, but if I get it, bonus points, but I don't think so. Which leads me into my next thing, where I think the final episode, I think it will end with Matthias and Hellgate. Um, I think that's where the show is going to stop for the crows, at least. I don't know about Shadow and Bone. I don't know where it's going to leave off for that. But I do think that the end um, for the crows is going to be Matthias and Hellgate and Nina and Matthias being separated in that. I think I think we're going to see that. And it's going to be heartbreaking because I love Matthias. I really do. I feel for him. I think he has a great arc. <sighs> Just the way he starts and ends and the way his arc comes to a full circle, um, it's good. It's really good. So I expect to see him thrown in Hellgate. That boy better be locked up by the time the show is over because uh, I want to see it. I'd love to see it. So I think he's going to be in Hellgate. <laughs> Finally, my lasting thoughts are that I think that if the show sticks true to the heart of the characters from the books, and I'm talking about Mal, Alina, the Darkling, Kaz, Inez, Jesper, Matthias, Nina, the core ones, Zoya, Jenya, David, I think that if the heart of them is still there, then it'll be good. It'll be worth it. It'll be okay. If the heart of all the characters is evident and we know them and we can connect with them based off of what we know from the books, if we still have that same connection from the books, the same connection to the show characters and the actors are able to pull that off and just really understand the characters that they're portraying, that's all that I can ask for. And that's like my biggest wish, my biggest hope is that the heart of the characters will be there. I really love the cast. Like I've said multiple times, I really do like all the actors and I think they understand their characters. So I think that, I think that's gonna happen. Um, and that makes me really hopeful. Overall, I'm scared, I'm nervous just for everyone to see it. It's gonna be this semi-small thing that's gonna be overnight blown up into a huge thing and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a shock for a lot of people. I think this could set off a lot of the actors careers It could open up the fandom. We could have merch sold in like Hot Topic and stuff like Harry Potter um, Narnia, Twilight. It could be the next big thing. It's reminding me of the feeling of going to watch Hunger Games movie like every year and it was people who don't even read the books were there like lined up to watch it. I think it I think Shadow and Bone is going to be a worldwide phenomenon and I'm excited for it. That's pretty much all of my theories and expectations. I'm going into it very open-minded and very excited. Um, I got my tissues ready. I'm going to be, I've already, I don't work Saturday. So Friday night is when I'm going to be able to start the show and I plan on binging it all. All eight episodes, we're doing it, we're doing it all. 
like we're not gonna stop and that's pretty much it so with all of that being said no mourners no funerals and i will see you guys on the other side bye I saw you out in Hollywood, so we drove to Laurel Canyon. I gave you all of my spare time, and you just couldn't stand it. You say she's a work of art. You pick her up from school.